black. Where? <laughs> you're supposed to be there, but you're not. The inventor of the pixel passed away. Not the phone, the, the actual pixel. <laughs> what? Is that true? I don't know. I was going to open with some joke that, because nobody's seen you since, that you went to Mutts and Cuts, and now you're back. And What did I do? Haircut. Oh, yeah. You know what? This is my dog's hair looks better than mine. <laughs> I didn't say it was bad. I was just saying, like, my wife cuts my hair, so you know. It is what it is, you know. This we don't have a bowl big enough for my head, so <laughs> I have to go someplace. Anyways, we are back. Um, Such as it is. Yeah, it is a Friday. It's the the fourteenth, whatever. Uh, super interesting news yesterday out of the gaming world, but it doesn't really. It's gonna the ramifications will be massively beyond the gaming world. Um, okay. Fortnite mm-hmm. laid a trap. <laughs> Apple a cunning trap. Yeah, I, a cunning plan, I guess. For you black know, my, fans, my volume is still apparently low. Hmm. I do not understand why. <sighs> Should be shot yeah. cutting vodka instead of this thing. Anywho, anyways, you know. I'm about to put my face in front of a claymore because nothing is working. Um, Apple put a claymore down, or Epic put a claymore down. Apple yep. walked in front of it and it exploded um, with their little payments scheme schema, if you will. And then Google did the same thing. Yeah, I think that that was the interesting one. I don't think Epic was as prepared for the Googs. Uh, no, they were. <laughs> did they have their <laughs> they lawsuit were. ready too? Oh yeah. In mm-hmm. fact, the Google lawsuit has additional information in it because apparently they forced OnePlus and LG not to allow um, Epic to put its uh, Fortnite and its App Store on their phones. Mm-hmm. Mm. Interesting little restraint of trade. Yes. But by so, the way, they let Samsung, the biggest phone maker, mm-hmm. put their own App Store on their phones. Because they have a special little sweetheart deal with those guys. Mm-hmm. Right? So it pays to be humongous, I think, is what we're learning here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be fun to watch because this is how – this has the potential to be to bubble up into a serious antitrust litigation foundation. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, my – can you hear that? No. Like, first of all, my, my in-laws are here for God knows why. Um <laughs> Hopefully you could hear that. And like they are like doing yoga above me. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And like I can literally see the camera shaking. Do they, do they know you're doing a podcast? You know. That work occurs because it's a Friday. Yeah. It's like we we would try to make plans. It's, it's, it's not worth explaining what this is. Trying to make plans with my brother-in-law. Mm. We text those guys. And my uh, sister writes back and she says, he'll get back to you later. He's golfing he's probably not going to answer his phone and i was like golfing is not work golfing is play it's friday he can he can answer a text but he hasn't because that's what happens when you act like that people just kind of dig their heels in now we might miss out on a chance to do something awesome because it's kind of a time limited thing Mm -hmm. Mm. but you know as long as he's having a good time playing golf it's yeah it's fine anyways fortnite Court case. <laughs> yes, like they're, they've sued Apple. They've now sued the Googles. They are angry at their fees and their control of the world. And, uh, you know, th- this is, there was a report out or some stats out that mm-hmm. on Google, Fortnite was making like three and a half million dollars a month. And yep. on iOS, it was like four and a half or five. So effectively, they are putting, they're not only putting down like, you know, th- the court cost here, but they are going to be mm-hmm. losing some serious revenue per month. I'm curious what they make per, per PC. I bet it's a lot higher. Yeah. I mean, this is a company that was just valued. I want to say it's $17 billion. So you finally have a company with some money, Yep. <laughs> you know, does not give a crap about anything. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful part about this, I mean, just the, the thing that should warm the hearts of anybody listening to this is they said, look, we're going to lose lots of money doing this and we're losing lots of money because of their business practices. We don't want any of it back. We're not asking for damages. We just want them to change their illegal business practices. We want this to, we're doing this for everybody, you know? And Mm -hmm. it's like, right, exactly. 
Yeah. You got to think, I think, I don't know if Steam has come out and officially supported it, but you got to think like Steam or Valve uh, has got to be on board Mm -hmm. with this. Um, Microsoft is probably sitting there kind of just, you know, twiddling their thumbs, but they're obviously with xCloud. They are very much in favor of this. Probably any company that, you know, small or large has got to be in favor of this. Right. I, Google's an interesting one because Google, of course, has the Play Store on Android, and Android mm-hmm. is by far the biggest digital market, um, a, or I should say smartphone market. Um, but they also have a little gaming service. Yes, they do. Stadia that yeah. can't get on iOS because of a business practice that is exactly what they're doing other people on Android. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we could all agree to stop pointing the guns at each other and uh, just do the right thing for the industry, you know? Do the right thing for everybody. Yeah. I thought I had a home run too yesterday. It tweeted out this picture of the Surface Duo with like Fortnite on it. I'm like, Microsoft mm-hmm. already had this in the marketing material as a joke. And like yeah, yeah, that yeah. thing, like it just blew up. Like it was, and then Google pulled Fortnite too. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, Microsoft had it. They had, they had the win. And then I thought there was a chance Google wasn't going to pull it. I thought you know, so too. Given what they had seen, what had just happened. You know, this was uh, clearly a, ca- a carefully laid trap. Um, you know, it's like you know, legal hundreds of pages of legal documents mm-hmm. at the ready. You know, I mean, they had a marketing video, uh, the 1984 yeah. ad, which <laughs> was know. which awesome. was brilliant, by the way. It's I awesome. mean, it's yeah. they by even way, had you know, the, best, the best detail in that video. OK, seriously, is that it, it's it was it's four by three. Like, mm. so it literally matches the original. Like, it's you know what I mean? It's not like a widescreen thing. It's four by three. Now I don't know. I don't know if this is intentional. I have to think it is. But there's a, a not a famous, but a like a popular picture of Tim Cook like out with like sunglasses on, and mm-hmm. the sunglasses they put on the little apple in that thing are the mm-hmm. same ones. See, I, 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 if I had made that video, if I did anything to do with it, that would have been a cartoon image of Tim Cook. It would have been obviously Tim Cook. Yeah. You know, you could even. I mean, look, if you had enough time. You could probably uh, digitally analyze every speech he's ever made, pull every word out, and get all the words from the you know that you wanted, mm-hmm. and, and make it his voice too, you know. But whatever. Anyway, it was effective. Plus, yeah. you know, Fortnite is like a cartoon, so doing it as a cartoon kind of made sense. Yeah, it's it was uh, very well orchestrated. I think is the mm-hmm. way uh, to describe yep. what Epic has done. It made me want to go buy something from the Epic Game Store, you know. Yeah, like Fortnite. Uh, like Fortnite. Well, Fortnite is free. It's I mean, free, yeah. but whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not a Fortnite fan, but you know they have a game. They have a PC game store. It's pretty good. You know, yep. they they give away free games all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're like free games. They're not free if you still have an Xbox Live account. They're like free, free games. Like actually free. Yeah. You know, it's nice. It's a. It was a, an interesting marketing. It's like they care about games and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too because it, it's not so much. I mean, they do care about games, but they're they're more concerned with. Apple and Google, and th- they had this complaint about Microsoft too, just being oh, yeah. no, arbitrarily in control yep. of what can and cannot succeed in the world. That's right. That's right. And so, yeah, what, right, right. Sorry. No, you're fine. That, that's that's it. That's all the, the, the problem on Windows, and uh, you know, with uh, Tim or Tim Cook, um, Tim Sweeney's earlier complaints about the what was then the Windows Store is that it, it's not the only avenue for getting apps on Windows. Obviously, in fact, it's kind of a minority avenue. Uh, it's not really. Mm. Uh, a place most people go. Um, but when you have a, a mobile platform where it is literally the only way, where there is no side loading, or on Android where side loading is, as they describe, an incredibly difficult uh, process that any normal human being would find to be semi-dangerous and probably would never go through if they ever step through the steps. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when you have payment systems that only can come from Apple on their platform and you can't have your own payment system, even though we're a seventeen billion dollar company. We have our own payment system. We don't need you to do this. Um, you know, it's it, you're just restraining trade. You know, you're yeah. literally abusing monopoly position, and um, and I, they're just right. They're mm. right. They're just right. The other interesting argument too that Epic did make, which I I mean makes sense now that like I read this, like oh yeah, that makes complete sense. Is the reason they don't do this on the Mac is because they can't get away with it. Right. Right. Yeah, they have a Mac app store, and I'm sure they wish that was the way everyone got apps. I'm sure they would love that. But yeah, and I, you know, look, I, there's all this stuff that goes on. You know, this kind of debate goes back and forth. You know, Apple erected this giant infrastructure, and it doesn't, you know, pay for itself, except that it does pay for itself. Literally, it's subsidized by all their hardware sales. But okay, whatever. But you know what? You know, Walmart built a giant infrastructure for having stores and supply chains and blah blah blah, and Costco did, and 
supermarkets did. Everyone, that's the that's their price of doing business. They're trying to create an ecosystem. I mean, you know, Apple is the most profitable company on earth, guys. They're not struggling to keep the lights on in the data mm -hmm. center. You know, everyone's only oh, have to pay for the bandwidth. Oh, you know, like poor Apple, my God, the bandwidth. I mean, I, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, look, I, there. Yeah, should there be some fee? Yeah, there should be some fee. Yeah, I think that's. I think, and somebody asked in the in the question. They said, "What is the right thing?" I think Epic charges is it twelve percent? Yeah, and, and like they're real transparent. They're like five percent of this is our cost. Our margin is the difference, and everything else is yours. Yeah, like that's. Uh, by the way, Apple's would be a lot less. Uh, they they're a much bigger business that is more finely tuned. I mean, uh, you know, Epic comparatively is a small business you know relatively yeah, speaking. compared to apple for sure Here, here's what's right because people have said well you know what are you going to do you're going to make uh, apple let people sidle with apps on an iphone yeah no 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 the, the answer is the fee needs to be more reasonable right we, everyone has heard the 30 percent figure right mm -hmm. there should be no fees on any any transactions between a company and its customers if a company is using your app and the app is free but there's a subscription tied to it apple should not get any of that they're not doing anything that that is not their infrastructure being used. That's a ludicrous fee that makes no sense. That needs to go away. Um, the other thing is that Apple needs to allow uh, developers to have a choice of payment systems. They shouldn't have to use Apple's payment system. And you know that's that's what's fair, right? Um, and Apple, by the way, under the, the situation I just described, would still make billions and billions of dollars from this. Uh, it's still a very lucrative business. They have billions of customers. Or a billion customers or whatever it is yeah it's uh it'll be interesting and to see what happens i don't there was no indication of this yet that apple was going to try to do this when they moved to arm um michael pointed out that uh, they'll yeah, do this yeah. when they switched i mean that that would be a natural point where they could try to inflict that that barrier i don't, I just, I don't see it i don't I don't, it. I don't see it happening because that's a harder it would be um yeah i don't know for them know. to do that uh they would have to keep the Intel emulation going forever and say, well, if you want to run the, you know, if you want to get the apps from somewhere else, they have to be Intel apps and they'll, they'll run under emulation. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess they could do that. We will find out. It's, um, you know, they could only digitally sign, uh, arm apps through Xcode mm -hmm. that go through the store or something like that, whatever, whatever the system is. I mean, yeah, well, I, yeah, we I don't, don't have to wait them, too long. By the way, as awful as Apple can be, I, I don't actually see them doing that. I, that's not, I wouldn't anticipate that. But who knows the bounce yeah. <laughs> for these guys? I don't know. This system has been broken for a long time. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm sure there are companies uh, that would like to be retroactively paid back for the erroneous fees that they've been charged. But like I said, I give uh, Epic a lot of credit for saying, look, we're not, we're not looking for damages here. Mm -hmm. Just want to fix it. Just want to make this right. Make it fair for everybody. This will never happen. This will absolutely never happen. But what if Apple just came back and said, okay, we'll just drop the price of our iPhones. <laughs> and that's that. That's how we're going to pay for them. Right. Yeah. You got to understand, like, um, hardware is an incredibly low margin business. In fact, for most companies, hardware is a, a negative margin. Yeah, it's margin typically business. like 1% to 3% <laughs> uh, is like what yeah. you make. What, yeah. are, what are Apple's uh, margins on hardware, Brad? Do you remember? I think if you put a zero after some of those numbers. And then a four in front of it. It's, yeah. they're in, the, it's in the 40s. <laughs> like... They make a lot of money, you know. Uh, they have an incredibly efficient supply chain and and manufacturing process. It's you know from soup to nuts or whatever across the board. You can they can that they whatever company manufact Foxconn manufactures one of these mm. things in in uh, China and then it arrives via FedEx at your house like the next morning. It's almost that fast. I mean, it's ludicrous. They're very good at this. Um, so they make a lot of money, but you know that business is what subsidizes everything they're doing. And Apple is still on the side, and Google is too, by the way. You know, uh, getting this services business going, and they're competing with their own developer partners, and that's fine. You know, but part of the complaint there is, you know, their own business is given uh, advantages that others don't get, and um, I don't think that needs to be in place because the truth is, Apple's customers, by and large, are very loyal to the company. And if you look at, you know, Apple News and Apple TV Plus and Ar Arcade and whatever else they have what the, the, you know, from iCloud and all that stuff, there's going to be a significant number of people who buy Apple devices that still subscribe to that stuff. And that's good. That's fine. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have to be, um, you know, they don't have to be protectionist and give their own services 
unfair advantages for that to happen. It's still going to happen. Those are still going to be healthy businesses. Yeah, speaking of the subscriptions, there's supposedly this fall they're going to announce a like Apple One, yeah. and then you know you get. Oh, did you see they're going full blown Microsoft 365 too? They're going to have multiple tiers. And uh, yeah, the the low end tier will be music and TV, and then there's three more tiers. And they, you know, we're speculating on the price, but if you, um, I th I think Apple Music, well, I know Apple Music is nine ninety nine. Uh, Apple TV Plus, I think, is four ninety nine a month. Is that right? So fifteen bucks, let's say, for those two things. If you bought them separately, maybe that thing will be like twelve dollars. You know, you can kind of do the math on this. I mean, however it works. So you could be paying, you know, forty five bucks a month ish for the full uh, meal deal, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the wow. same price you for 40, a high wait, 45. Well, remember, you know, the, yeah. the goal, goal is to get money every month. It's smart, right? Mm -hmm. So if you iPhone, most people don't hand over a thousand bucks, right? Or 1200 bucks or whatever it is. They, you know, they pay monthly and it goes over two years. Uh, the problem for Apple is that when the two years expire now, people are actually kind of holding onto the phone, a lot of them. And so they, they kind of rely on that constant churn right and this services thing can make that up and it can make it up from the very same customers you know so you might have a guy who for two years is spending 40 bucks a month on the phone and then 20 to 40 bucks a month on these services and someday the phone you know there'll be some period of time where he's not paying for phone but the services are evergreen you know they keep going and um mm -hmm. it's a smart business you know it's a, it's a good it's a good idea i mean like it makes sense from yeah a yeah um yeah just 45 bucks sounds like a lot but i guess I guess well, I'm... that would be for everything, and that includes like iCloud storage and yeah, you know. yeah. The only the only one that's interesting, I mean, I don't interesting is the wrong word is potentially Apple Music, but I, I'd rather yeah. I personally I think yeah. I'd rather support Spotify just out of a you know personal yeah. feeling. No, I, 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 I've certainly made the case. I mean, I you should be using third party services. Uh, I think from just from if not only from a moral perspective, but just from a doing the right thing for yourself perspective, but. There are advantages to sticking in the Apple ecosystem. I don't think you see them too much when you do Apple TV Plus or something. Mm -hmm. Apple, like whatever. I mean, but uh, unless it's artificial, like Apple only allowed uh, Apple Music on its home pods until I think the coming release of the uh, software or something like that. But um, yeah, I, I personally think you're better off using third party services. But there, like I said, there are people who are like, yeah, you know, I want the Apple thing. I know it's going to integrate, it's going to work great, it's going to work across my products. Yeah. If you've got an Apple TV, if you've got the HomePod, if you've got an iPhone, you have an iPad and a Mac, it, it it's a, that's an easy easy decision. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what I mean. You don't Apple as a company doesn't have to restrain like pr make it harder for other companies just because it decided to get into mm -hmm. music or TV streaming or game playing or whatever it is. But they are and it's like guys, we, you know, you're just hurting your own customers. You know, you could have like these loyal customers buy an iPhone every couple of years. They buy Macs every three or four years. They buy Apple TVs. They do whatever it is. And but now they can't reach. They can't access the Xbox gaming service they want to use. It's like what, that. It just sounds arbitrary. Like, does that mean like tomorrow I'm going to wake up and like you're not going to allow Dropbox because all of a sudden cloud storage is a big deal for you? You know, like I I don't know. I just I worry yeah. about that kind of thing. Yeah, I, well, I would worry about it if I was like an Apple guy, you know. Yeah, like I'd love to see X Cloud on the Apple TV. Mm -hmm. I think that's oh, a yeah. natural place yeah. for it. But is it going to happen? I think it's going to happen. I really do. I think behavior is going to change. And I mean, by the way, and behavior is going to change doesn't necessarily mean the exact opposite of what's happening now. It doesn't mean the curtain comes down and everything change. You know, everything's different. There, there are compromises to be made. I mean, I know we live in an era in which <laughs> nobody compromises, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's very harsh one end of the spectrum or the other. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not asking for zero fees on anything, you know, uh, there's a compromise to be made. So, you know, maybe there's a point for Microsoft where they say, look, yeah, you can have the percentage, whatever it is. I, I don't see why you need to check every game that's going through the, <laughs> the service. I mean, it's, we have ratings boards for that. Like that's just a false, you're, you're really just, re you know, trying to prevent us from operating a business. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think we, it's going to get better. We, well, eventually, we don't. Something's going to change. So yeah, the, the one of there's two one of two paths that's going to happen. Either the courts uh, side with Epic, and mm -hmm. something does fundamentally change, or they side with Apple, and then they just re entrench on this, and just it's nothing's yeah. ever going to get updated. I have a hard time. I haven't read this yet. I guess Bloomberg has an interesting analysis of the antitrust cases against the four big tech companies that are currently 
under a lot of scrutiny. And it's and the premise is that not, none of these are necessarily the slam dunk that some people think they are. I actually do think all of them are slam dunk, so I'm very interested to read this. But regardless of that, um, the other reason that Epic's lawsuit is really important is because it puts it into court and mm-hmm. it, it, it renders some kind of a decision. Now, some legal entity, some judge or panel of judges or whatever, is going to actually examine this and hold it up against other businesses, other markets, other you know, and and determine whether or not they're acting in a way that is illegal right. outside of slow-moving antitrust regulation, and mm-hmm. which I think we can all agree is, if anything, is antiquated anyway and hasn't kept up with technology. So th- this, to me, is a speeding of the process. Like, this, if successful or not, we may not need antitrust, <laughs> you know? Like, this may kind of settle it. Yeah, but there's going to be a lot of... Um... No matter what happens in that court case, no matter what happens, it's going to get uh, it's going to get retried. It's going to go work its way up through the courts because nobody's going to take that decision and then just be like, okay, we're done. Like they will appeal it either side. Well, of yeah. So by the way, yes, of course, that, that, you're right. Um, but like I said, I, I think there's a compromise to be made, and I think, um, and I guess uh, literally in a legal sense, compromise would be a settlement at some point where uh, Apple, you know, Apple. Remember WWDC this year? They kind of quietly revealed on the side, oh, by the way, we're going to let you set default apps on a couple of things, that thing mm-hmm. you've been asking for for 20 years almost, and or 10 years, whatever it is. Um, and we're working with, what was it, not Sonos, or was it Spotify, or one of the companies that complained, and we're going to, no, no, uh, maybe it was the Basecamp guys, whoever it was, but they were working with that company that had complained and said, look, we're, we're, we're reviewing our process. We're going to change it. We're going to make this more transparent uh, and less arbitrary. So just already, like you've seen that level of change, I, mm-hmm. I think we're going to see more of that kind of thing. I hope so. We will see. I think so. We will see. Um, conveniently timed, uh, Microsoft announced that over 2,000 indie titles on Xbox have, uh, and they've paid out 1.5 billion dinero yeah. to those individuals, or I should yep. say companies. Um yeah, so I haven't written about this yet because this is a little down the road for me, but I've been doing that series about working from a laptop. So one of the things that's changed just in the past 24 hours is I'm now actually using my monitor again. It's not just a an expensive stand for my webcam. But one of the things I've been doing on the side is working through some PC games and kind of looking and seeing mm. what that looks like. Of course, I'm actually going to be paying more attention to Epic Games now because, you know, God love them. But uh, I, was, I was literally just noticing in Xbox Game Pass Ultimate in this case, there's a nice collection of indie games out there right. and i've played some of them like oxen free yeah. and inside and firewatch and you know there's, mm-hmm. a, bu- there's a bunch of them. there's uh, but some of these ga- cuphead is one of these actually although now they're part of a major studio but um there's some amazing indie games you know yep. and uh yeah so I'm, I'm yeah there's one i'm playing now i don't remember the name of it but you're like a paris uh taxi cab driver and you have to solve a murder and mm. <laughs> you know it's kind of yeah, it's kind of cool. Like it's just you know, it's an indie game. It's just a you know, wasn't made by Activision. Yeah, yeah. You know. Another one, another game out there that's quite fun. Um, it's on the PlayStation and on Steam. It's got a ton mm-hmm. of traction. It's called Fall Guys. Oh, I've never heard of that. It's sort of a. You got to just go watch the video. It's not like a, a serious hardcore game, but it, it's yep. almost like remember Fog the guys or frog guys. Fall Guys. It kind of reminds oh, me of like guys. the. Uh, I'm sorry, I have heard. Okay. most extreme That's elimination a, challenge that yeah, used to be on ABC. Yeah. Like you'd run through obstacles. Like it's mm-hmm. sort of like that, but in like a cute artsy fun way um, that has completely blown up in popularity. Uh, that is a little too cute for me. Watch the videos though. Like it's, it's, it's like a snackable casual game type yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. no, it's it, a, those things were like the giant things spinning around yep. and you jump over the water and you get slammed. This is the type of, of game that I'd want on a phone. Yeah. So, Anyway, looks like the type of game that you could play on a phone. It, it does, looks... but it, I don't think it's there yet. I, I'm, I can yeah. almost guarantee it will be, though, in the near future. Oh, yeah. My AC cool. just turned on. So if you hear background noise, that is the. <laughs> it's not the in laws anymore. It's the. Mm. It's not. So there we yeah, go. I, I don't hear anything coming I do. out of here. It's annoying. Okay. Sorry. Have you gotten the double screen thing yet on uh, Teams? <laughs> 